Up next, a new fear for parents. Some teens are eating a weed they think will make them high, and five have ended up in the hospital. Also, a 54-year-old lost and found case. And we'll show you some of what you'll find at the big ski show this weekend. Live at 11 is next. Up next, new details on last night's murder case. Also, the young man accused of causing serious injuries to an elementary school principal may never see the inside of the cell. And slow going on the interstate as some concert goers crash in Albany tonight. The full report is coming up right now. From WNYT, Albany, this is News Channel 13, live at 11. Tonight's top story, the devil's apple sends five teens to the hospital. The kids apparently ate these things, hoping to get high. Instead, they got very sick. This is News Channel 13, live at 11. Good evening, I'm Ed Day. And I'm Chris Kapastashi. This is something we haven't seen before in our area. The teens took something called Jimson weed. On the street, they call it the devil's apple. Kumi Tucker has been investigating, and she joins us live now from Ellis Hospital with more on this story. Kumi? Chris and Ed, five teenagers in five days have been rushed here to the emergency room at Ellis Hospital. One still in intensive care, and health officials fear that hundreds of others may be at risk. It looks harmless, but it can kill you. Jimson weed grows wild throughout the world, and it could become a problem in the capital region. Four teenagers from Schenectady County and one from Montgomery County were treated at Ellis Hospital after eating the seeds. One had jumped out a window. Another spent more than a day on a respirator. He became so uh, violent and had to be sedated that in order to control his behavior for his own protection, uh, he then required uh, respiratory support. What scares health officials are reports of growing and selling the plant, also known as devil's apple. Eating the seeds can lead to seizures, coma, even death. If you ate the seeds, you'd see the onset of symptoms usually in around 30 minutes, but certainly within an hour. But they last a long time. Hours to days, and sometimes even weeks, depending on the amount ingested. Now doctors are asking parents and children to know about the dangers of the poisonous spiny plant. So that they don't ingest uh, unknown substances with the idea that it's going to be a high when in fact it might be a very life-threatening experience. Four out of the five teens either knew of or knew each other and apparently they told doctors that hundreds of their friends uh, had been exposed to the dangerous poisonous plant. Chris? What if anything do authorities know, Comey, about where these teenagers got the uh, devil's weed? Well, according to health officials, they seem to have, uh, this devil's apple has been uh, homegrown here and sold by students. And apparently, this is of some concern, it's been touted as a, as a quick, great high, when in fact, doctors say, in reality, at the very least, it's a really unpleasant evening of having your stomach pumped. Huh. Yeah, I can't think of a few more things I'd rather do than that. Thank you very much, Kumi Tucker. Ed? Authorities in Albany now building their case against the man they believe killed a nursing student last night. 29-year-old Nicholas Pryor accused of killing Jenna Hannes in her apartment on Madison Avenue. The two were not boyfriend and girlfriend, but authorities say there was some kind of relationship between them. It's particularly heinous crime. Um, uh, whatever their relationship was, there was nothing in the nature of their relationship which could have possibly warranted the type of cruelty that he exhibited toward this woman. Police discovered the crime after they got a 911 call from the apartment. On the phone, they heard only screaming. But after arriving at the apartment, police say they could not get inside because of a vicious barking dog. Only after a dog warden removed the animal did they discover Hanas inside. She was alive when police arrived, but died a short time later at the Albany Medical Center. The case of a Troy teenager is headed for family court, and that means it's possible none of three people suspected of seriously injuring an elementary school principal will ever see the inside of a prison. A Rensselaer County grand jury today issued a directive sending Philip Pitcher's case back to family court, which means he'll be charged as a juvenile offender. Police say Pitcher and a 13-year-old boy tampered with a fire escape outside School 12, causing Principal James Cap to fall. A 16-year-old girl supposedly tried to help them cover up their crime. The DA in Albany County is now investigating the case of a missing priest. Father Brendan O'Keefe disappeared last month from his parish at St. Michael's Church in Glenmont. Parishioners, he took about $30,000 with him, along with thousands more, in church property. 
Bethlehem police have been looking into this, but District Attorney Sal Greenberg tells News Channel 13 that his office is also now investigating. Formal charges were filed today against the man police say was dumping the bodies of the pets he was paid to cremate. 53-year-old Terrence McGlashan is charged with fraud. McGlashan was in Saratoga County Court today. Outside, Bob Frechette was waiting. Frechette says McGlashan was supposed to cremate the remains of his dog, Sinbad. When he picked him up at the Spoon River Animal Hospital, he took him from there and dumped him in the pit with the rest of them animals. McGlashan, McGlashan was released today in order to surrender his passport. If convicted, he could face up to three years in prison. Now for the latest on what local police and fire departments are working on right now, here's Karen Lehan in the News Channel 13 Operations Center. Karen? Thanks, Chris. They were headed to the Puff Daddy concert at the Pepsi Arena and didn't let a missed turn slow them down. A group of concert goers missed their exit on 787 and Manance police say the driver put the car in reverse, backed over a guardrail, and flipped the car over. No one was injured. But another car smashed into the back of a car that had slowed down near the accident scene. Two people taken to an area hospital. No word whether the group made it to the concert. And that's the latest from the Operations Center. Ed? Thanks, Karen. There certainly wasn't any snow in our area tonight, but that didn't stop skiers from heading down the slopes in Albany. Brian Jackson joins us live from the newsroom to tell us more. Brian. <laughs> Well, and a lot of folks may not like winter weather, but it is a fact of life for those of us who live here in the Northeast. And for those who like to make the most of winter, well, their choices were overwhelming at this year's Snow Expo at the Empire State Plaza. There may not be snow yet, but there was certainly no lack of anticipation here, as hundreds of skiers, snowboarders, and a few of perhaps just the curious stopped to check out the latest in winter sports. The event, which runs through the weekend, offers just about everything and anything for those who love snow. If you live here, you need to get out, you need to have fun, and you need to ski or snowboard and just really take advantage of what's around. Of course, for those who prefer warmer weather, there's still plenty to see and do at the Snow Expo, including drawings to win cruises and trips south, and even the chance to try sports like skateboarding. I think I killed him, Steve. And for those who don't ski but have been thinking about it, there's even an opportunity to see firsthand what it's all about. Okay, Doug. How are you doing, Doug? Take those lessons, though, because that's the, that's the key right there, to really try, you know, don't try to go out and just go down the hill. That's when you're going to kill yourself. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but um, really and truly, get out there and give it, a chill, uh, give it a shot. And for those who love winter, each has their own reason. But among kids, perhaps this young fellow summed it up best. Do you like having days off from school when it snows? Yeah, that's my favorite part, probably. It's a nice back tub. Now, the Snow Expo at the Empire State Plaza opens again tomorrow morning at 11 a.m., runs till 7 p.m., and Sunday as well from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m., Ed. I just want to be sure what I saw there at the end. Was that a guy on skis on a trampoline? Yeah, they had that as well. I was going to try that. Actually, it looks a lot like when I ski. <laughs> Except I don't have the trampoline. I just be up in the air like that. Sometimes. Glad you didn't try it, Brian. <laughs> so uh, you're with us tonight. Thank you. Bob Kovacic. Bob Kovacic joins us now with the first warning forecast. I'll bet you just want to try that skiing, don't you? I can hardly wait, I'll bet. but All I right. will. Let's talk about it. We won't be skiing this weekend, and for the next several days, temperatures uh, too warm for any snow. But some rain coming in, 6.38 a.m., sunrise, cloudy skies, 42. And again, we've been de-emphasizing the storm a bit as far as a soaking day-long rain. Scattered showers around, cool and breezy, 48 will do it in the afternoon, sunset at 4.39. We'll check the weekend forecast and early next week in a few minutes. Thank you, Bob. My guess is the guys that do the acrobatic ski jumping, who do the tricks, they come off the ski jump and do the tricks, they probably train on trampolines like a gymnast do. That would make sense, sure. Those mogul guys who do the... Uh, actually, I'm told, you know the guy who was falling down and all? Later on got up and was a terrific skier. He oh, was, uh, so that was all a... Charade. Something, something to make us feel better. <laughs> right. Oh, New York's Lieutenant Governor and Governor at it once again. This time, they are feuding over Governor Pataki's travel plans. That story is coming up. We're also going to tell you about a local woman who was recently reunited with the class ring she lost more than half a century ago. And then later, you may want to take a close look at this photo. Many say they see an angel in the clouds. Live, local, late-breaking with Ed Day and Chris Kapastashi.
This is News Channel 13, live at 11. News Channel 13 is sponsored in part by Mazda. Experience cars and trucks built with a passion for the road. Check out News Channel 13 online with MSNBC and NBCIN. Welcome back. Governor Pataki taking some heat tonight for a West Coast trip that begins tomorrow, and the criticism is coming from his lieutenant governor, Betsy McCoy-Ross. The governor plans to visit eight states during the next week. He says his trip is intended to raise money for next year's re-election effort, but the lieutenant governor says she was not notified that the governor was going to be out of the state and that no arrangements were made for her to be acting governor in his absence. McCoy Ross says the state constitution requires that she act as governor when the governor is out of state. There's a flurry of diplomatic activity underway relating to the latest showdown with Iraq. The United Nations Security Council will meet on Monday, and that tops our world check. Iraqi leader Saddam Hussein still refusing to allow U.N. weapons inspections as long as Americans are part of the inspection team. Saddam has also threatened to shoot down American spy planes, and that, says President Clinton, could bring a military response. In Russia today, communists celebrated the 80th anniversary of the Bolshevik Revolution. The demonstrators were led by the leader of the Communist Party, who addressed a crowd of thousands in front of the former KGB headquarters. A couple of Russians on board the space station Mir were celebrating capitalism today. Two cosmonauts used credit cards and an internet service to go on a shopping spree in Manhattan. They spent about $7,500 on Barbie dolls, Chicago Bulls sportswear, computers, and an exercise machine. It took 54 years, but Anna Carroll finally has her class ring back. Bill Ampton traced how an Academy of Holy Names graduate was reunited with the ring she lost during World War II. There it is, looking none the worst for its convoluted journey. Two years after she graduated from Albany's Academy of the Holy Names in 1941, Anna Kalana took off her class ring for a typing test, then walked away without it. Went back the next morning, they searched the school, nobody could find the ring. So I figured, okay, sera, sera. Somehow the ring ended up with a teacher at the business school where Anna lost it. Eventually, that teacher passed it on to a relative of current Holy Names student Ann Whitbeck. Last spring, the high school freshman was looking through a jewelry box when she made the connection. I went to the alumni director, and we looked up Anna's name and found out her her um, present location, and we we called her up. And at 9 o'clock at night, I said, who oh, in heaven's name is this, and what ring? I didn't even remember the ring. And all of a sudden, she said she went to Holy Names, and then it all <clears> clicked. <throat> So, 54 years after she lost it, Anna Kalana Carroll now has her class of 41 ring back. She hopes to eventually pass it along to her granddaughter. Bill Lambton, News Channel 13, Albany. Where's your class ring? It was stolen. I still have hopes of getting it back. I have hopes of getting mine back. I left it in a music room at college. I wonder if anybody keeps manages <laughs> to keep their high school <laughs> ring. Well, when, I'm sure when you got yours too. I don't know. Was it you know 50 bucks or something? Now they're like five, six, seven hundred dollars. I would be very upset to lose a class ring now. Now I'd get a pinky ring. <laughs> we are going to the weather center. We are, but first we have to do a break. Yes, we will. But Bob will be here. We'll check on his class ring. Coming up, News Channel 13, first warning weather with meteorologist Bob Kavache. I want to say hello and thank you tonight to the Spinal Cord Society. Last night they uh, had an annual fundraiser. Every penny that they raise goes to Spinal Cord Research. They're a wonderful organization and they gave Channel 13 uh, this class and uh, was able to go last night. I was not around even though I've uh, spent several years at that uh, fundraiser. Great people and really important work. Of course, uh, spinal cord injury came to the fore with Christopher Reeves' injury. But when you think, for example, about the teacher at school yes. 12 the and how, yes, just like that, you know, accidents happen. And Absolutely. 
they're getting very close in a number of ways. They think that they may uh, be near a breakthrough. We hope they that are, and be excellent. we want to thank them for this. That's a very nice. Very nice. We appreciate the Hold on to that. Don't lose it, because during the break, we established that Bob lost his high school ring. Yeah. Well. It just happens. I don't know. They all magically disappear <laughs> for some strange reason. Let's talk about our weather outside, uh, Chris and Ed, on a night that's uh, fairly gray and fairly cool, 44 degrees. Our winds are... Uh, Pretty much coming in in a variable direction at 9, 93, 73 percent relative humidity, and the barometer falling. 52, the day's high, 33, the low. As I said, cloudy now in 44, 75 has been the record high for the state, and 18, the record low. Lots of clouds from the weather checkers from Albany and Nassau to Chatham. Low to mid 40s on average in the Berkshires up to the southern Green Mountains, and west and south of Gilboa and Cairo and Saugatees. And again, uh, it is dry. This uh, weather system is kind of taking a left hook inland bringing a lot of rain to the central Appalachians but not a whole lot to our area raining now from west of Binghamton Elmira along the southern tier of New York to Buffalo Erie Bradford Pittsburgh down to Philadelphia in fact they've had a lot of rain in the uh, areas of southern Pennsylvania as much as two and a half to three inches of rain there since early this morning this weather system heading on up the coast is uh, again the surface low is producing rain but the the major large upper level low you can kind of see that spiraling circulation is centered right over West Virginia. And that's where they've had all the rain with the system, the rain coming ashore and heading westbound more than northbound. So we're pretty much free and clear, and I think that spells some better news in my mind for the weekend. Tomorrow may feature some, some light rain or drizzle, but uh, at least some parts of the day will be dry. Perhaps as that upper low comes overhead, there'll be a little more rain Saturday night or Sunday. National temperatures cool, but there is some cold air now building in southwestern, western Canada, pouring down toward the northern Rockies, and there'll be a, a significant outbreak of fairly cold air over the northwestern part of the country the next couple of days. Here's your national satellite review, and again, big swirling mass, that low-pressure area. Again, uh, quite a lot of cloud cover all the way back into mid-country and all the way up into our part of the country. The clouds will be with us through the weekend and early next week. There'll be some rain from time to time, but again, by no means a big drenching washout coming this weekend, at least not like they've had in the Appalachians today. Back in a few moments. Good evening, I'm Stephanie Moore. Welcome to Friday, November 7th, Take 5 Billion, being observed by an auditor from KPMG, Pete Mawick. Tune in tomorrow night to the New York Lottery's television show, New York Wired, where the jackpot will begin at $110,000. Lottery retailers will play to win money for their local school districts or the New York Wired Scholars Program. Tonight's winning Take 5 numbers are 16, 14, 32, 15, and 13, making Friday, November 7th, winning take five results. 16, 14, 32, 15, and 13. Thank you for joining us, and have a good night. Off we go into the weekend, a mostly cloudy, cool night. We'll take rain out of the picture for tonight, 38 to 43. And again, downplay the rain tomorrow. There may be a little rain or drizzle, but not a big soaker, 47 to 52. Little rain, drizzle, and patchy fog tomorrow night, 40 to 45. And as we stretch things into Sunday, there's probably a little stronger chance of some rain on Sunday. Cool rain at times, mostly cloudy. Temperature Sunday afternoon, 45 to 50. Monday, a shower, 46. Uh, partly sunny, chilly on Tuesday, chance of showers or flurries on Wednesday. Overall, not a great weekend, but not as bad as we thought uh, the way it looked yesterday. Okay. Guys. Yeah, Thanks, it's okay Mom. Sunday. We have two great, great to back games. Big football, football games. games. Yeah. Yes. Nobody can be disappointed this weekend with us. That's right. We got our bases covered. There was we? a great local game tonight. There was a bunch of them, Chris. Uh, a smorgasbord of local sports. Uh, three hockey games. The Rats and the Wings in Glens Falls. RPI was home. Union was home. And more importantly, it is championship Friday night in high school football. I've got all the scores and highlights next on Big Board Sports. Coming up, Big Board Sports with Roger Wyman. Busy night of sports, high school football, and hey, they're calling it the game of the year. Shen against Troy, Class AA Super Bowl. Check out Colony. It was packed. Close to 7,000 on hand. 21-7 Troy at the half. Shen scored first in this game. But here in the fourth quarter, Bobby Rio to Larry Sr. 14-yard touchdown pass. 28-7 Troy. 2.16 to go. And Chris Breen punches it across from two yards out. That made it 35-7 Troy. 447 total yards offense to 187 for Shen. Troy celebrates the Class AA a Super Bowl, and they'll meet Watertown next weekend in the state region.
It's just a great, great group of kids, and I can't be more proud of them as a team. Everybody contributes. Every week somebody does something a little bit different. And, you know, to go down 7-0 in an environment like this and not let it phase you one bit and come back with 35 unanswered points, uh, I guess that's what a football team's all about. Championship Friday night, continuing at Knox Field up in Johnstown. And here was the story. Amsterdam and uh, uh, Queensbury going at it for the Class A Finals. 15-12 Amsterdam at the half. And then in the third quarter, this is Dan Stein on a 25-yard touchdown run. His second of the game. That made it 18-15. They had the two-point conversion. Nick Mahalik makes it 20-15. And John Erion, in his first year as the head coach at Queensbury, has that club at 10-0. They're going to the state regionals with a 20 to 15 win. Kids deserve all the credit. I'm telling you, it was our game plan. We knew it. It wasn't a secret. They just came through and did it. All right, let's go to Class B and the Super Bowl held tonight at Shenandoah. Interesting matchup, but not the matchup of the night. Defending champion Ravina against once beaten Hudson Falls. Forget Ravina's offense for a minute. It's defense that wins championships, and Ravina's defense tossed the shutout tonight. Their running back, Gary Jones, rushed for 209 yards. The celebration was on. 48-0 Ravina to the regionals they go on the road to a possible state championship. Again, the kids responded to a challenge real well. They got, you know, a little bit of a scare last week, and I, I meant it. You know, that's how, how a champion responds. You get knocked down, you get back up, and you come back. And they really practiced well all week, and they, they played well today. Two more championship games tomorrow in high school football. Now, this was also a busy night on the hockey front. And for the third time this year, the rats and the wings going at it. This time back up in Glens Falls, uh, over 4,000 to watch. Brian Helmer, two goals for the rats. But the story of the night, Norm Miracle, 34 saves for Adirondack in a 3-2 win the second time they have beaten the Rats this season. On the college ice, both RPI and Union in action as they uh, launched their ECAC seasons and both got wins tonight. Dan Fridge at home with his club against Dartmouth. This is junior forward Matt Garver beating Eric Allman and a beauty to make it 1-0. Allman got peppered early. Elaine St. Hilaire, 2 RPI, this made it 2-0. He had the hat trick tonight. And then Dan Riva, who had two goals, made it 3-0, 7-1 final. RPI with the win. Meanwhile, at Achilles Rink in Schenectady, Union got its first win of the year. They beat Vermont. Alex Todd, 11.52 of the first to make it 1-0, his first collegiate goal, and that would hold up. Trevor Koenig, best goaltender in the nation a year ago, 35 saves tonight, his seventh career shutout, 1-0 Union with the win. Some more scores, Dallas uh, in the, uh, that's now in overtime, Rangers and Dallas tied 2-2 in overtime. The Islanders 3-2 over Carolina. NBA, the Nets are 4-0. The Celtics won tonight. They beat the Cavs. Atlanta is 5-0. Uh, they beat Chicago. And out on the coast in the second, that's the latest on the Knicks and the Lakers. Yankees sent pitcher uh, Kenny Rogers uh, along with $5 million to the Oakland A's for third baseman Scott Brocious. Uh, Larry Rosh Rothschild, the uh, former pitching coach of the Florida Marlins, is the uh, new manager for the expansion Tampa Devil Rays. And tonight's Klein's All Sport Prediction of the Week. How about college football? Do we have it? Yes, we do. And we like Penn State to beat Michigan on Saturday 24 21. That game in Happy Valley at Beaver Stadium. Penn State 24. Michigan 21. All right, okay. guys, that'll do it. Soon. Thank you, Raj. We will, um, you're supposed to start this. Do you yeah, want me to just... It's gone, but wherever it was. Okay, there it is. We're going to recap the top stories after a break. And we'll fight the teleprompter and show you a photo that some say shows an angel in the clouds.